Remember to turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. You know I write with a scalpel because my penmanship is surgical. I am rewatching Naruto Reboot Episode 1 to give my insight on why I made the changes that I made. There will be no spoilers for things that haven't happened in the most recent episode. I removed Naruto from the academy to make him more of a dark horse. I added the requirement of needing a parental figure to join the academy. Him not going to the academy also creates a better reason for his lack of ninja knowledge. I had him learn from a video of Hiruzen because Transformation and Shadow Clone are Naruto's signatures at the start and I needed a way for him to know them. I hold off on showing the Shadow Clone so that it builds up anticipation as to what the move is. I also had Iruka allow him to spar so that Naruto and Sasuke could spar like in the original. The whole Mizuki incident is actually inspired by Hero Academia's first chapter. Hero took from Naruto, so now I'm taking from Hero for a Naruto reboot. A crime happens, the protagonist tries to stop it, and then the mentor comes in to save the day at the last minute. I like this version for multiple reasons. 1. Iruka gets to be a boss and earns even more respect. 2. Naruto only has 4 clones, which manages the power escalation as you'll see. Naruto making 100 here and then never really doing that much later kinda makes no sense. There are headcanon explanations, but it's much cooler if Naruto starts with a low amount and then slowly increases his total clone count. That way, when he can finally make 100, all that setup has an explosive payoff. I erase an epic moment to create an even more epic moment down the line. 3. Naruto doesn't get to be the hero yet, which also creates anticipation for when he can finally save the day alone. This is also the moment the Shadow Clone is finally revealed, creating a similar hype to Naruto finally mastering the move that he sucked at in the original. The next major change is Sakura. I've recently grown to love her original character, but the changes I made here were not just to stop her from attacking Naruto, but once again, to build up to an epic moment. The main change is that I had her hide her love for Sasuke. The audience knows, but none of the characters do. This hidden love makes the moment of her confession in the Sasuke recovery arc much more powerful because it's the first time she's explicit about it. Set up and pay off. Because she's not explicit about her love, she can't be explicit about her hate for Naruto, which means that the whole comedic scene in chapter 3 can't happen since her temper is a big part of the gag. I also had to remove Naruto posing as Sasuke because Sakura isn't verbal about disliking Naruto to his face. I kept Kakashi's chakra saber because it was a cool and unique weapon in his past and I thought it was a waste to have it just break since it was added later and Kakashi didn't have it in the present. Once again, I changed Sakura's actions to hide her love for Sasuke. Here, she wants to become a great ninja without a notable clan name. I took advantage of the fact that she technically had a clan, but none of them are fighters and they don't have a clan jutsu. I added camouflage jutsu to be more ninja-like. I gave Sakura a signature move, Cherry Blossom Clash, which is a Genjutsu because Sakura was stated to be good at Genjutsu and I don't want her to have chakra enhanced strength later in the story. The reason is because that made her a mini Tsunade. When I compare Naruto and Jiraiya, or Sasuke and Orochimaru, the student and master fight very differently because the student has Jutsu of their own. But with Sakura and Tsunade, it's copy and paste. I gave Sakura and Sasuke a flashback together to add more context to her attraction, although like I've explained, romantic attraction doesn't need a solid moment like that. I made Kakashi more pessimistic because down the line, I planned on Naruto being the beacon of optimism and changing the way Kakashi thinks. The Shadow Shuriken is now foreshadowed by a clone being missing thanks to my consistency in clone output. I removed the KK Genkai being a mix of elements because that was stupid. KK Genkai are basically clan jutsus that can't be copied. So if an element is restricted to a clan, how can other people get it just by mixing elements? That doesn't make sense and that's not how it was at the start of Naruto. I added the Saber and Cherry Blossom Clash to the Zabuza fight for continuity. I made Naruto lose control in QB form and have to force himself back to normal so that it looks just as negative as it is positive. This is more consistent with how it's portrayed in part 2 where every single time he uses the powers is a bad thing. That's all the changes in this episode. When's the next actual episode coming? When the most recent one hits 1k views or when I feel like it. The most recent episode is 7 and it's sitting at 600 views. I'm actually kind of glad that Reboot isn't the center of my channel anymore. I was worried a few years ago that I'd be typecasted as the Reboot guy, but now I have a wild array of videos, several successful videos, and my top two videos aren't even Naruto related. I also want to add that rewriting someone else's complete story is not a sign of high writing skill. You're just taking a story that's 100% done and tweaking maybe 5% of it. It's extremely easy, especially when you have the advantage of hindsight. Just because you can make a good rewrite doesn't mean you can make a good story from scratch. All of this is to say that this rewrite isn't me trying to sun Kishimoto or display that I can write better than him. It's just a fun writing exercise. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.